Good evening, welcome everybody from a discussion. This is episode 360, and today we have two on Duran Howard and Tony McGregor. And we're gonna be talking about PTK, uh, the late 70s group there in New York, and how oh, the group was formed in New Jersey. We're gonna be talking about their training with Greg Alon, Nene, GT, and all that good stuff. If you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button, and now I'm gonna be bringing up these guests, and we're just gonna be getting started. Hey there. Hi hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Good, good. I appreciate you guys uh coming on there. Um, Durant, can you get more? Can you move more to your left? Yeah, get you in the okay. camera. Yeah, perfect. All right, all right. And Tony, all right. Are we yeah. supposed to be following COVID protocol? Yeah, <laughs> you know what? We're we're making an exception. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give it to you. <laughs> For tonight, you guys can break the protocol. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited about this. I, you know, as I kind of mentioned to uh, you know Duran, like the, anything on the late seventies group, uh, you know, it really fascinates me. And back then, so let's. Uh, so when did you guys get started, uh, PTK, and who was the first person? Uh, the, the oldest of all of us is um. Tony, Tony's a senior. Tony's actually a senior. Well, I started in uh, 95, but um, the guys who trained me, Greg Allen, Charles Vigors, they started in the 70s. In the 70s, gotcha. Okay, okay. So how did you meet, um, how did you meet Greg? Well, um, there was a gentleman by the name of Stanley Harris. We used to call him okay. Shallaby. He actually introduced me to the Pinchot at a cookout at our friend's house. Lance Smith, who's a musician, used to play for uh, Whitney Houston. And um, he said, yo, I want to show you something. And from that point on, we started to do like uh, jurus and footwork. And then he said, uh, I'm going to take you to my teacher because health wise, I'm not really in the best condition. So I'll take you to my teacher. And that was Charles, Charles Vickers. And Charles Vickers, okay, okay. Charles was actually sick too. He was a uh, diabetic. So he would train me in, in a lot of knife and empty hand. And he recommended Stanley to take me to his classmate, which was uh, Bill McGrath. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. So he suggested Bill McGrath and then he said, first, let me reach out and see if I can contact him. If I can't contact him, he said, try to take him over to New York City and Manhattan on the Lower East Side and see if you can see Greg Allen. Mm. So that's how I met Greg Allen, because uh, we couldn't get in touch with Billy at the time. OK, OK. So uh, was that upon meeting him, was that kind of your first exposure to FMA? Yes. First time. Okay. I never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was always doing boxing, karate, and wrestling. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, same here. I was like, huh? FMA? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what would you think of it? I mean, you're coming from a boxing, kickboxing background, karate, all that, and here you are. You, you're meeting Greg, and I'm, I'm assuming you're seeing sticks flying around and nice, all that. Like, what would you think? Well, uh, I was confused. I was, I was intrigued because the technology was so advanced in terms of uh, the weaponry and how he would go from the weapons to empty hands. And then I would go and ask Charles questions and then he would do empty hands and then he would do a lot of knife technique. So I was, I was like mind blown because I was getting two different perspectives, but actually it was the same point. If you know what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, so you were getting not just the weapons, but at that time too, was he he was showing you some of the sea lot as well? Yeah, because uh, from the from the past groups, it was uh, guys from Jersey and guys from New York City, so they okay. would have classes back to back. Uh, Grandmaster Guy he would teach first, and then uh, Master Joffrey would teach afterwards. But most oh, of the guys, 
Charles would tell me most of the guys would say, uh, we're going to lunch and we'll be back. And they would leave and never come back. So Joffrey would have like half a class. Most okay. of the people that would stay would be the guys from Jersey. So uh, the Jersey guys started to get more of the sea lot aspect of it in comparison to the guys from New York. They got more of this thing. Yeah. So uh, it got to a point where Joffrey says, I'm tired of the New Yorkers. I'm going to just teach the, the guys in Jersey. And he came over to Jersey. Interesting. Wow. I never, okay. I never realized that. And, and this was about kind of like late nineties or about. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, uh, well, when that, that happened, that was probably in the eighties at some point. In the eighties at some point. Yeah. This, this is, these are stories that I heard from Greg and, and, um, Charles telling me. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, uh, so then, when so around your time when you got there in 95 so gt was he wasn't teaching then was he yeah he was still teaching but he was in he was back in the philippines right and, exactly. um, okay. at that time uh greg was preparing a trip for us to go out and oh, okay. you know 96 so he set up a group of guys from boston um la and me and him we went with those group of guys in 96. Wow. And that's why I met GT personally. And I met uh, Nene, Nene Tortel. Wow. So you went out there. It sounds like the same year Tom. Wow. OK. That, that 96 year. So you went out there. Um, you, you went out with Greg, of course. And now now you're meeting the man and, of course, his uncle. Wow. 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 I mean, that must have been like I can't even imagine. That must have been like overwhelming. <laughs> so, yeah, it was mind blowing, man. It was mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about it, like the whole the experience. I'm assuming you guys were getting up really early in the morning and doing footwork. <laughs> well, we were doing a lot of footwork, a lot of weaponry. Um, yeah. There was a lot of uh, commentary where they explained things. Yeah. Um, they would pull you on the side and, and kind of show you little tricks of the trade. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, the first half of the, the, the seminars were – taught by GT. And then the second half, uh, SMG started to teach. Nene, he started to teach afterwards. And then- so, uh, Interesting, interesting. Like, so I know you're relatively new. So when you're when you're out there, like, did you see a difference between how each one like was teaching and what they were, uh, what they were showcasing or, or stressing, I guess? I mean- Yeah, it was, it was really a big difference. Um, but, I don't know how to really say it. Both of them are very dangerous men. That's, <laughs> that's the best way I can put it. One has yeah. a very unique defensive and close quarter range. Mm. And one's expertise is he can do it from both perspectives, but he picks you apart from the outside. Mm. And that's kind of how they train you. You know, they train you if they really like you. I, I, I seem to be ad adopted into like the family with those two and uh gt said you know you're gonna go with my uncle i want to send you to my uncle which was some of the things that i've heard he's done with a lot of his favorites he's sent them to other grandmasters to learn their way of fighting and philosophies okay. so he did that with me he sent me to his uncle so when you're there so how long were you over there for like how long was the actual camp in that um i think that trip was six weeks and you then i went for a good six weeks yeah and then i went back again uh 97 and then i went back again in 98 so i went six weeks six weeks and six weeks but the second time we went it was just me greg and a gentleman from ohio Okay. And uh, Robert Casper. So, and uh, we took Steve Anthonson, who was a Bloomfield police officer at the time. And um, I think it was just, it was just like a small group of us that went. And then afterwards, probably, yeah. okay. me and me and Bobby Casper, just, we just went in 98. And then okay. from there, I started to bring him to my house. So he stayed at my house. Flew him over. Okay. Yeah, I flew him over. He stayed at my house for a year straight. Then he went back home. 
Then he came back and then he stayed for like another eight months. And then we started to do seminars. So I started to go on the road with him and do seminars. Wow, this is late. So back to the night, the first camp there, it sounds like, so there were a lot of people that came from the States that went over. Yeah, because um, we were supposed to go see Joffrey too. And we found out that he was deceased like later on because we couldn't, I came in the office and he was talking to Joffrey on the phone and then he told him, yeah, I have a young student with me. Um, Joffrey was excited. He said, I'm going to teach you guys a new system. He mm -hmm. said, I can't wait to get here. So Greg is saying, well, I have tape. Can you send me a videotape? Um, I could send I could send something for you and you could just put it on tape and let me see it. And he says, no, wait till you get here. I'm going to have something special. And then I think maybe like three weeks when we were about to submit the money for the flights, couldn't get in contact with him. Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's too bad. When you, um, so when you're when you're over there in the six weeks, so was the majority of your training then with Nene? Yes. They had the floor. They had the floor. I have, you know, I have uh, tons of footage of all of it. I have Leo teaching, Grandmaster, and I have Grandmaster Nene teaching. Wow. I mean, that's so I have tons of it. It's VHS. Yeah, right back then it was V, right. But just, I mean, imagine, I mean, that's going back uh, close to, well, it's like, uh, <laughs> don't say it 20, 26 years or wait a minute i want to make sure my math here is correct but uh at any rate though i mean but he was still kind of you know obviously younger so he, i'm i mean i'm sure he was moving pretty well still then and everything they didn't miss you know? a beat they yeah. didn't miss a beat. uh one day we were at my house uh grandmaster and they grabbed an apple put it in his hand and just crushed it and and said you want a piece and started to chuckle so that tells you yeah. how strong, and he was he was over 64 back then. 64 back then, right, right, yeah. Jeez, so what, uh, so now, as far as the training and all that, were you guys, I mean, were they touching on everything, single, double, knife, I mean? Look. Yeah, we, we did single, double, knife, guns, gun disarms, um, knife disarms, empty hand versus knife, knife versus knife, double knife, double mm. knife disarm, double knife <coughs> counters. Uh, entry level footwork, intermediate footwork, advanced footwork, footwork that they don't show to a lot of people. We went over a lot of different things, you know. Yeah, wow, wow. Exercises for you to do if you're alone to to keep your training enhanced. It's yeah. yeah. Awesome. Wow. So, and then again, you went there back 97, 98, and then the subsequent years, you started bringing them here. Yes. And, uh, wow. So, and that's, um, and that's, so I know over there you're training with NA, but you brought GT over here. So what was, um, what could you say, I guess, as far as when you brought GT over here, as far as the difference, I mean, was there a really big difference in the methodology and what they were trying, when you brought them over here as a compared to your training with NA? Well, yes. It was a, it was a difference because um, I had a long time with Nene, mm. so um, with GT with, with it was a it was us in the in the dojo right in the seminar format right okay yeah yeah so yeah, the right. things that he can cover when we're alone he can't really cover but there was days when GT came and we were alone mm. with him here and yeah he started to cover those things okay wow so you had the best of both worlds I mean geez. Is there one, I mean, is there one that, you know, not, I'm not necessarily saying it doesn't have to be favorites like that, but was there one that you gravitated more towards or did they each have something really equally that you got from that as far as whether teaching or what they instilled in you? I mean, <clears throat> Honestly speaking, I gravitated to both because both perspectives complement one another, just like the stuff that we learned with uh, Master Joffrey did did the same thing and and see the unique thing about grandmaster nene is if you ever train with him see so so this is the first thing gt took me nene. nene took me in the mountain and we started to circle the mountain and we were going to different houses and huts with other grandmasters so he would just go like this and they would grab the stick and then they would start teaching me and i would oh, be God. like this I would be like this, okay, sir, thank you. And they would grab me and go, no, no. 
we're not finished. Yeah. Get this now because I don't know if I'm going to see you again. Yeah, right, right. And most of those men, those gentlemen that that taught me stuff, they're deceased now. So they they were trying to give me everything they possibly could in two minutes. Yeah. And then they would just take it and break it down. Okay, this is way of using it. This is the other way of using what I showed you. This is how you combine the two. So I, I was just being overwhelmed with a lot of information. It was like I was inserted into NASA and I had to build a, a, a ship tomorrow. <laughs> and then you had to fly it. <laughs> yeah, you fly it, right? So, yeah, man. So, um, okay, so when you're – okay, yeah, he's taking it. Wow, wow, wow. Um, when you brought – G, you're starting to bring GT over and like that. Was he also giving you some of the C lot as well from Joffrey in addition to basically the PTK material? Yeah. When he got along with us, though, you know. Oh, he so he, so in other words, the seminar was mostly PTK when he was alone with you, kind of the C lot stuff. Okay. Yeah, it, was, right. it was a mixture of both. He would tell us, you know, this is from the C lot, this is from uh, the PTK. Yeah. So is it yeah. fair to say that you were you um I'm assuming this is I mean just based on the dates and the times you're giving me, this is pre tri B. I mean you're getting what Dose Methodo, 64 ways of attacks, Seguidas, Contradas, yeah. Recon. Okay. Back then, back then there I'd never heard of um Tri B back then. I think it was 2001, 202, I think is I I think around mm -hmm. that time is when it came out. If, if I'm not mistaken, you know, just by virtue of the interviews here. Um, but, but obviously you were before that time. So you were getting sort of the uh, older material. So yeah, I was, I was getting some of the yeah. older material and I had some of the guys around like um, Ninoy. Um, he used to be around, too. He was hanging around. Samuel, he used to be around. Um, he's still in the Philippines. I don't know if Ninoy still is. And Ramel was there, too. He was training, but he would train very isolated. Uh, GT would have him over in his in his corner, and they would just go over a lot of different material. And you know, he would hang and laugh and joke with us and hang out and, and chaperone us because when we would go into the city, it would be like an hour and some change, hour thirty, hour forty five. Mm -hmm. So they would come down, and we would go down and go shopping and uh, like at the market to grab sarongs or whatever uh, merchandise you wanted to bring home as a collectible. And then we would go back up to the mountain. So they would come down and they would keep the people off, you know, because when you go down there, it's, it's very poverty stricken. So a lot of the people would be like, you know, tugging on you and asking for money. So they would be like, you know, in Tagalog, telling them to back off, get away, you know, and they would help protect us and guide us through the city, you know. So. Okay. So um, <clears throat> with that, so how long, I guess, at that point, were you still trained with Greg Alon? Were you still seeing him? And at that point, the second time we went, I think that's around the time his studio started to kind of go on a decline. Mm. We used to still communicate, and because of the seminars, I had made a suggestion. I said, "Um, I'll bring him over here. I'll bring Grandmaster over here, and we could do seminars and use your network." Mm because you have a, a, a very vast network. Yeah. At that time, him and um, GT, they were kind of like tug of war. GT would expel them, then bring them in, then expel yeah, them again. That was around that time, right? The expulsion. Yeah. So around that time, um, when he expelled them and he started to, to kind of talk to him, he asked mm -hmm. if he could uh, have his own system, which was mm -hmm. Senator Sawali. And GT kind of chuckled, and this is Greg telling me, he kind of chuckled, and he told him, um, well, it's, it, it could be a subsystem, you know? And he said, well, you know, I want I would like to to kind of take that and make that my baby, and he was just like, oh, okay. You know, yeah. so, so um, around that time, when me and uh, Grandmaster Nene started to really develop a bond, and he started to tell me, you know, these guys, Charles, Al, Greg, they never got promoted to master. And they've been doing this art form for over 25 
to 35 years. Mm. So he told me he was going to promote um, the, the guys when he came back to New Jersey and he was going to promote Greg. So that's how Greg wound up getting his master certificate with GT's name on it and Nene's name on it. Amazing, man. Right. So that's that's one of the rare times you'll see those two kind of signs. Those two together. names together because after yeah. that, matter of fact, Greg after that made a conscious effort to train with Nene when they had the falling out between when they had the falling out with GT. Because I remember yeah. um you know seeing him going around with Nene. Um yeah, geez. But like you said, that's a rare that's a rare certificate, man. Both names. <laughs> I have it. I found it at my house. I was like, oh, and I couldn't even find my certificate. I'm still looking for my certificate. Oh no. But I found that one. Yeah. Yeah, man. So all right. So then you guys were talking, but you weren't necessarily, I guess, training together, you and Greg. Right? No, because Greg was his family was still in Manhattan on 14. Okay. But he would go to like Virginia and Florida. He would like Virginia go Virginia Beach is where he went, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when he went away, I was just still doing the stuff that Nene showed me when I was in the house alone. Mm -hmm. And then I would get with some of the guys and just keep working on the stuff. And then I would always go back to the videos and watch the videos. Cause I was training like, like all I did was eat, sleep, train, eat, mm -hmm. sleep, train. So I put so many hours, I would train like I was still in the Philippines, wake up 11 o'clock and go till like four in the morning mm. every single day. And when he came back, it was like, we never missed a beat. We just kept going. But yeah. the only time I would actually see Greg is when we would do the seminars and we would- the seminars together. Yeah, they would fly me in and then I would be grandmaster sparring partner. And then we would do the seminar. Then sometimes Greg would go in after he threw him around a couple of times, Greg would go, all right, Tony, come back over here. Yeah, so yeah I, your turn. <laughs> yeah, because I was I was in my 20s, so I could take it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Going yeah. into my 30s, I could take it. So how so uh, what do you think? You know, I, there were a few there was like a two year period. I was seeing Greg quite a bit. A friend of mine here that lived in Connecticut was bringing him here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just found him charismatic, funny, just uh, just a character awesome. like you know, what, you know, what'd you find about, you know, did you enjoy the training with Greg? What'd you, what'd you think of him? Hey man, I love that dude with a passion. You know, yeah. I was, yeah, he just brought, yeah, I know. I was trying to reach him before he passed because I wanted him to come out here and introduce the guys and, and young ladies to him. But, you know, I, I couldn't reach him. I was trying, I was trying, I was trying. Yeah. And um, then I, I saw somebody post something saying rest in peace. And I was like, wait a minute, you know? Yeah, I know. Because periodically he would send me a message and just ask how I was doing, and then vice versa, I would do the same thing. Yeah, he was. There's just something unique about him, and uh, not. I'm, and by no means am I saying I spent a ton of time with him. Nothing like you guys, but the time I did, you could just tell there was just something unique and special about him. You know what I mean? Is somebody like you, you? You don't forget. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, um, great guy. Great guy. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, so now, all right, so you're kind of continuing your training uh, with Nay, GT, depending on who's coming out, both. And um, how long did that continue for? Still till now. Still till, so you're yeah. still after both? Yeah. Yeah, he, he calls here from um, time to time, and we're in here, and he goes, where's Durant? Where's Durant? Is Durant there? And then, you know, he talks to us for about two or three hours, and we're like, yeah, uh, Grandmaster, uh, school's over. Uh, can we call you back? Can we call you back? And he's like, yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. And then he just walks away from the camera and the camera's just sitting there for like another 15 minutes and then everybody starts to slide out. Yeah. And, until until he says, all right, I'll call you back. And um, Grandmaster Nene, we were supposed to bring him here. Um, but unfortunately, his, his, his wife just passed away. So my condolences to him and his family. And um, so now that's on hold, you know. How old is he got? He, I mean, he's got to be upper like, 85 ish, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh. Wow, wow. And he's uh in uh, GT, he's same age, right? They're both around that age, right? Yeah, man, they're both the same, around the same age, man. They're around the same age, jeez. And they're That's still. Why, I want to see him. I want to see him, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right before. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. 
And they're still not talking, right? Correct? No, they're talking. Are they talking now? Okay. Yeah. We, um, oh. The last time we talked, we talked about last month, me and Grandmaster Nene and his daughter, she, um, Shelly. She, she said that um, GT, well, they both told me that GT kicked, drove over to their house and he got out and he said, hello, everybody. And he told Grandmaster an issue. And they went in the house and they, they sat down and they talked. Oh, fantastic. So so I'm, I'm glad that they mended whatever situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, gosh. Yeah. No, that's 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 great to hear. I'm glad to hear but that. But I want to say something, too. Um, Grandmaster Nene also teaches a salat form in his Dikiti Tertius Serratus. So... You know, I, I guess, what could you tell the folks the difference right now between like Nandes, what he teaches, and what GT teaches? Like, is there like is there a distinct difference, you know, like for somebody who might not know? <sighs> hmm, that's very, that's, well, I'll show you. I'll sure. Show you. All right. Here we go. Dan, Dan, come on, Dan. I'll do something with you. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I will lower myself and give you more of the, uh, space. there we go. So if uh, are you familiar with like the twelve strikes and stuff like that? Yes, I've seen it. It's been a while, but yeah. Okay. So Nene's twelve is like I'll just do five, right? Okay. It's one to the temple, right? Strike the body down to the solar plexus for number one. Same thing with uh, number two. GTs is more where you're striking the shoulder. So if you look at the two, you can basically kind of just change your angle defending. It's really the same, right? Three is up and hit the knee and then to the groin or to the chin. Banana, GT, it will be right here in the pelvic area or hitting the wrist or the elbow. Um, five, for Nene, is a straight thrust. GT's is a thrust, but it comes up. So if you did a technique from a number one, GT might hit him from that range, which is corto, right? But you kind of go into medio or medium. If you do a one, then they would come in here. So can you see? Yes. So from this strike here, right, this is going to go across the body, and then there's the disarm inside of the hat. So it's going to come here, and this is going to hit him here, where he's going to be thrown. And then from there, it's going to be a lock. See? If you're going to do GT and he throws that, GT might go here, bring it up, right? And once once he's here, he's going to hit it, see? And you're going to come here. Mm. That's right. Then he might go here, right? Or he might take it here. Again, if he goes into a five, then it's right here. So that attack is going to destroy his hand, so that if you don't get this disarm, the strip, you might get it just by this. Mm. So you're gonna go here. Then it's right into the blade here. With Nene. Huh? Then you're here. And now, whatever you decide you want to do from this position. Okay. 
So awesome. for anybody who's watching that, you could kind of make your own comparison between the two. But for me, it kind of goes hand in hand. One yeah. facilitates the other. If something doesn't work, you can go into the other variant. That's how I look at it. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, um, wow. So now, I, I guess as far as like, you know, just I would, um, before I want to get into, you you know, when you start teaching and all that, mm -hmm. it, was, there a new, was there a New Jersey group that came out of the New York group? And if so, what were they known for? Uh, the guys from New Jersey were known for the, the pinch a lot. Okay. So had, even though they got the BTK, in addition, though, more known for they got sounds like they got a lot more C lot. Yeah. See, so Charles was basically a human dictionary. Like he would show you a form from Serac, he would show you a form from Chimendi. Then if you did something, he would say that's Tita Kaling. He could tell you every system. This is Magnet. This is Howie Mao. He could tell you every system that was incorporated into what we do. Mm. With Nene, the way he taught me, I would ask those things and he would say, never mind, just do what I'm showing you. So a lot of things are here, but I just know how to do them. Now, as far as where they came, maybe ge geographically, for instance, yeah. or what style. Gotcha. Right, okay. right. Yeah. So that's that's what he kind of instilled in me. He just put pushed that narrative. I would always ask yeah. Grandmaster, what's this, what's this? And he would go, never mind, just do what I'm doing. And, and put me in the right position every time I did a, a defensive attack or a defensive into a counteroffensive. Contratus, yeah. recontratus. Right, because you got the old right, the old material in, um, in there. All right, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you guys are known for the sea lot, the New Jersey crew. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but see, I got, again, with my training, right? It was Charles first. Okay, Stanley Harris to Charles to Greg to GT to S G M. Then it was Grandmaster Magianis, and then it was other grandmasters going around the villages. Mm. So, and then I was also trained. When I say Charles. It was a network within the crew. So okay. Alan Dennis was also my teacher. So Al, his specialty, because he worked in the prison, was the Kung Tao and the Howie Mao. Mm. Very, very efficient in terms of his Kung Tao. So I'll give you a story without giving you too much, because a lot of stuff and information, he doesn't really like it, you know publicized and a lot of those guys don't like a lot of the stuff that we learn publicized that's why mm. I, i'm the ghost because i was always kind of bringing up the rear but they kept me like the best kept secret one time he knocked you know a, a parking meter yeah he hit it with an elbow and knocked the parking meter the top part off of the pipe Wow. Without doing any kind of physical damage to it. So that tells you how efficient his kuntal is. Wow, 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 wow. Aside from those gentlemen, um, we we did some research and we saw that there was another uh, master teaching uh, Pinchox a lot. So we went and we visited him. And I trained at the Indonesian embassy with him for over a year. His name was Yana, Master Yana. So he would teach Pierce But when he kind of saw what the group had in Jersey, he would share a little more with us. But when we sat down and we used to talk, he would tell me that um, his objective was not to teach the fighting. It was mm -hmm. more of tradition and stuff like that. So. He doesn't really teach the fighting. Okay. So at one point in doing it, so who, as far as your ranking goes, who gave it to you? Did Nene give it to you or GT or both? Uh, Nene 
gave me senior instructor. Mm -hmm. And GT, the last time he came here, he asked me what was my rank now? Because back then I was a guru, <laughs> uh, you know? So he asked that last time. And uh, the last time um, to Han Durant Howard talked to him, he said, you know, GT, uh, Tony's still waiting for you to confirm the upgraded rank from, from you, even though that he, he has it from your uncle. And he said, okay, okay, but we haven't heard anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you should obviously tell him. Tell him. You what? should, yeah, well, yeah, based on people that have gotten it before you, you should, yeah. That yeah. Goes well. Tell the reason I got promoted. Well, the reason why he got promoted is because of the, you know, because Al trained them more with the prison mentality and street mentality. So they trained a lot with the blade and they trained a lot with the empty hands. Mm -hmm. So GT saw him using a stick when he knew I was here and he was like, oh, okay, Duran, I'm going to promote you to two huh? So. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't know any stick, no drills, no no stick at all, and mm -hmm. he couldn't move with it. So we just started working. You know, we worked over the summer, and he got that stuff down. Okay. Wow, 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 wow. So then, when did you start? I guess you know, when did you start teaching? Um, when did you start teaching it? He had me teaching back in the '90s because we would do the seminars. So he was prepping me then because he would, okay. he would teach for hours and hours and then he would just sit down. And then me and Bobby Casper would get up and we would have to conduct the lesson he just went over. Okay. So we would teach back then. But guys started to take a liking to me and they would call and say, hey, Tony, man, what are you doing? Like, uh, if I came over and gave you a couple dollars, would you would you show me some stuff? And I'm like, you were in the class with me. And, and they were like, uh, yeah, but you got it a little bit better than I have it. So, and I go, all right, sure, just come on over. I'm off on this day and that day. And for a while, guys were like coming over to the house and I was just getting better and better. The more I started to teach, Grandmaster mm -hmm. said, the more you teach, the better you become, the more yeah. understanding you become in terms of learning how to execute the technique and making adjustments. So always try to do that. So did now did you ever so reflecting back when you're teaching now, I mean in there and you're still training, did you meet a good chunk of the New York guys or no? Yeah, I met a good chunk of them. Uh some of them had passed away by the time I came in, but um there were a few left. So you have um Doc Williams, Eugene, that's his name, Eugene. Um you have Big Mike Caesar. Uh, John Jackson, who's not, no longer here, God rest his soul. Um, he was like the senior, like one of the mm -hmm. seniors. Then I would hear Greg always talk about um, other guys, like Doug Pierre. He would mention him. Um, what's the other brother's name? A.K. Barroca. He would talk about oh, him yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. um, he, would he would talk about Bill McGrath, Tom Bezio, he would talk, Greg would always compliment a lot of those guys and always say he wished he could contact them so that um, I could work with them. He always tried to get me to work with other people. Even he wanted to set up something so that we could go see uh, the Kenyatta brothers too, the grandmasters over there. But yeah. didn't have, you know what I mean? It didn't, a lot of that stuff never happened. <clears throat> but That's he wanted, bad, you know. yeah, 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 definitely. Wow. I'm trying to learn as much as I can because a lot of people say, yeah, good. But in my mind, I still suck. Yeah. So I'm still trying to learn and get better. I yeah, I want to be the best version of yourself. Right? Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's the best thing that you kind of mm -hmm. set like that type of standard. That way you mm -hmm. don't get complacent. A lot, of, a lot of martial artists think they've arrived. And let me tell you, man, I've seen some stuff over there. And it makes me feel like I started this morning. So yeah, uh -huh. I'm I'm still trying to 
I'm trying to get better. You know, if I could find uh, somebody else to train with, I will. Like even Junior, as soon as Junior gets the opportunity, I'm going to bring him over here too and train with him. So, oh, Guy Hey son? Oh, no, Junior. Um, Grandmaster Nay's son. Oh, Graham. Oh, and they, okay, gotcha. Oh, Junior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I used to, I, I stayed with him and, you know, we stayed with him in Manila and we trained with him too. Mm. So any, any and everybody I could get with, I'm going to try to go over there and learn if I can, you know. What about Tuan Romel? He was just around, I think, recently. You guys in touch? Nah, I haven't talked to Romel since I was in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, Royce always yeah. has seminars, yeah. and Royce, Royce tells me he's going to be there, but Tom's not on our side where we could meet. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it sounds like he brings them out every so often. I'm sure hopefully one day you guys can make that happen. You know? Yeah, man. Um, It'll be cool to have a reunion, you know? I think so. Yeah, all you guys. Um, so what do you – now, did you – so when you were teaching, did, were you actually teaching at a school or was it more kind of like the private space? No, or? It was It was just like how they taught me and at the comfort of my home. You know, yeah. we would be either inside or we would be in the backyard. It depended on the weather. You know, if it was nice out, we were outside, you know, yeah. because I, when I talked to them, you know, they talked about a lot of different things. They said, you know – Belts are for holding your pants up. They said, really no schools. It was really just clubs and more like a family setting. And and, and that stuff really stuck here. Yeah. So I just try to follow a lot of the old ways that I've been taught to not disrespect the art, you know? Mm. Now, say you're still teaching, right? I mean, Dur uh, Tuan Duran's bringing you in? Yeah, he brought me in. He's 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 bringing me and bringing me and i'm like trying to pull back but he's like come on man. <laughs> he's like come on please come on and i'm like ah you know come on you came yeah i just came out i just i just showed up one day because um charles. charles had i didn't you know he was sick and um mm -hmm. he had had transplants with his kidneys and stuff and um uh, he asked me to come up, he said, uh, I want you to go help Al up at uh, Master Durant's place up in Maplewood. He said, he's a really good guy. He said, I'd like you to go up there and help Al because mm. physically I can't really do it. He said, but you go up there and, and help him teach the system. I said, okay, sure. That was like one of the last times I talked to him. So I came up and I was looking for Al. Al wasn't here and um, Tuan Durant was teaching a kid's karate class. So I sat down and I watched for a while. And I said, how you doing? My name is Tony McGregor. I said, I'm here. I'm trying to find um, Al Dennis. I said, how are you today? He said, I'm fine. And then he continued teaching the kids. After a while, I got up. I left. So I went on the road because, you know, I, I teach dance. So I'm touring and doing stuff on the road. I came back and I said, you know what? Let me go back up there again. So I came back up and introduced myself again. And then we just started talking. And then he said, yeah, um, Al kind of, you know, he left and he's no longer here. I think he's retired from here. So yeah, he says, uh, if you're not doing anything, he said, you want to go have lunch? And I said, uh, sure. And then we went and we kind of like hung out and we started talking. And um, he said, you ever thought about teaching like a class? And I was like, nah, I don't really like to show what I learned because, you know, some of the stuff shouldn't be revealed. And he was like, ah, maybe you should think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I said, yeah, that's cool. So I kind of changed the subject real quick. I said, hey, man, I'd like to bring my, my son and my granddaughter up here and, and let them learn some ninjutsu. Would you, would you mind doing that, teaching them? And he said, sure, sure, bring them up and, and I'll, I'll show them. But then, Lieutenant. <laughs> so then this is the person that changed my mind Lieutenant Eric Moore he asked me <clears throat> would I come up here and, and do something because I started to show him some application and he said I've never seen that before would you mind coming to my 
place and working out with me, or we could find another place. I have keys. I have a lot of keys. This is what he said. Got a, lot of keys. <laughs> a lot of keys to a lot of dojos. He said, so if you don't mind, would you would you like to come over and um work out? And I said, Well, Randy asked me the same thing. And he said, Yeah, we could we could do it up there too. We could do it up there too. I could get some people. And then we all met up and Randy said, Yeah, I could get some people too. And now I'm here. All right, wow. So, so if it wasn't for these two brothers, you probably would never see me or never heard of me, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be teaching this. I would just be doing seminars and having a grandmaster come out or grandmasters come out and I would go back in my little cubby hole, you know. Wow, they brought you to wow, they brought you to the exposed you. That's good. So what uh so when you now are you actually teaching in class or, or is he mostly having you come in there for seminars? Class. Oh, uh, okay. So all right, all right. So what what's your, what's the age group you're teaching? Adults. All right, okay. So just no <laughs> no teens, like teen and like uh, the, the youngest person is my son. He was uh okay. what what was he like 16, 17? Yeah. He was like 16, 17 when when I when all right, so you, all right, so so if they're teens, upper teens, they can they can participate. No. Yeah, yeah, because you know why? I'm teaching how to. No, 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 no. I definitely not low kids, but upper teens. Yeah, yeah understood. Yeah. Yeah. So upper teens, adults. So how long you been doing it? Eighteen. We're about three. We're about three years in. Eighteen. You came in. It's our fourth year. Two thousand eighteen. Yeah, fourth year. Yeah, it's our fourth year. Fourth year, and we had the the COVID. Yeah, all right, so what? Uh, that's awesome. Now, are you teach? So are you teaching the whole gamut? You're teaching PTK, the C lot. I mean, the whole bit. Okay. Yeah, because once you learn that stuff, it becomes a part of you if you embrace it. Yeah. Now I can dif differentiate it, but uh, you, you're gonna be incomplete when you do that. Everything you learn in life, you you implement that as your life goes on. You don't say, okay, yeah. you know what? I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not gonna drink water too. No, you gotta you gotta eat and you gotta consume everything you possibly can to stay healthy. Right? And refreshed. So you can't you can teach C lot, but you might as well teach the whole thing, man. Like mm, yeah. one, one facilitates the other and gives you a better understanding on how to diffuse the things you already have or don't have, right? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a sounds sounds like they're getting great great stuff from you. So, uh, what, how, what's the frequency during the week? One, twice a week? What do you? Twice a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Twice a week, Wednesday. Okay. Right. Yeah, at night at this time on uh, Wednesdays and then Saturdays we're in the afternoon. So the afternoon varies. If it's summertime, sometimes we're at one o'clock. Sometimes we'll go to the park, or sometimes we'll stay in the dojo. Um, mostly three o'clock is the time we okay. teach on Saturdays. We got two guys here that you know. We got Tom and uh, Mike are, uh, are uh, saying yeah. hi. Oh, yeah? Tell those brothers I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> they so, came uh, is, there, is there a particular or, like, I mean, are you kind of doing the, I hate to say to use the word traditional, but are you kind of showing the weapons first, then empty hand, or any particular order, you get these guys? So, so what I'll do is this. I'll go into weapons, and then I'll show you the knife, like I'll, I'll show you the stick first, hmm. because it's it's different appli application. So again, I'll show you. This is a sure. stick, stick application. Yeah. So if Dan, oh, there we go. Perfect. If Dan throws a number one, I've had him right. Yeah. In a sense, this is a knife application, right? But this goes into a stick application because now I'm grabbing and putting the weapon here. If he attacks, if he's here, you see, now again, this can be a dual application. This can be a stick or this can be a sword. So 
and then throws it. See here. Now this, see that's sword application. So what I'll do is make him cut himself or. <laughs> So if I do that, that is really this. Yeah. So that is really that. And then you take them down here, right? And now you've got all of this stuff. <laughs> Again. Stick. Because you're clacking, right? Mm -hmm. Now, sword. You see? Cutting down, slicing down. So, stick. Sword. So it's just a, a mixture of everything, really, just being combined into it. You know? Nice. What um? So how do you dress? Um, I guess do you? How do you you introduce sparring with them gradually and on? Um... Well, you have uh, here then, got control sparring, and then we have the gear in there. So if we control spar. So then you have one, two, three, four, and you just control the range. You look for the opening. So the minute he throws a one, you see him already inside. So, see? Hmm. Sometimes don't even see it because it's so quick. Look at that, I can. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And that's just, it's not full speed, but close to it. Yeah. Yeah, whatever else, um, as far as demos you want to show, I mean, yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Anybody want to do something? <laughs> Come on, Ski. Come on, Ski, show some more. Yeah, introduce yourself, Ski. <laughs> We're going to have a couple guys show something, and then I'll show something. Sure, else. yeah, perfect. Okay. Hey, bro. Hey, yeah, you're going to blend? Yeah. Hey, Marat. So, this is, uh, this is my son right here. Uh, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Come on. Dan? So, this is uh, blade against blade. This is, okay. uh, this is ski. And again, that's Dan. And this is from uh, Pinch Out. More so if you stab it, you stab it, cut, slice, get out the way. Got some stop, stop, pick out, you stab it again, cut across, turn them around. One more if you slashing. Growing area, come up and keep going. But one more if he's slashing, it's going to get out the way. That's it. Okay, so this is going to be in the medium range. <clears throat> So, then throw your number one or whatever you attack. See here. So now you start to play a little bit of the combination between the C lot and the stick fighting, or if you're using a sword. Okay. 
then we do a one and two. See, so right away, when I cleared the room, I went to meet him. He was already hit off of the first attack because you don't have time to do one. You keep doing this. So the fight should be over the minute you start. Once he throws something, bang, that's it. Right? So if he throws a one and a two, you see, right there. Run off the two. If he throws a one, two, or a three, see, inside already. When you take the arm, I'm already here. Now, if you use the other hand, when he throws, see here. See? So you pass through, now that's your disarm, hit, right here. If we do sections, right? So you have one, two, three, four, and then you have five. So the minute he throws, you just take it out and you hit him. That's without even using footwork. If he throws and you use the same technique here, you just come over. See? Here. Once you go here, you just take that. And you sit again. Awesome. <coughs> Anything else? Whatever you want to show. Yeah, the folks are digging it. So whatever you want to show. Okay. I'll do a real knife. All right. You gonna do this, real nice? This, or are you gonna get Brad? with Brad? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh um, what what Brad Mass and Nene would do. So if you're in a restaurant or you're sitting down, if he comes in, you don't have time. I'm gonna have to show you the next show. Now you you're done. See? So you don't have time. You can't run because he's gonna stab you up. So when he comes in. So you just take it here and you disarm. Mm. You know, once you disarm it, you just go here. Hmm? So that is me really ripping his shoulder out of socket. Mm. But you use the chair to make him disarm. Because you can take it with your hand, but if he uses that, you're in trouble. Yeah, definitely so, in trouble. So when he does it, you see you move. Here, that's your mm. foot, which is actually you yeah, sidestepping. Right, which is okay. Cool. So when he thrusts, you, you go right at it. You stop the momentum right away. See, and then you just attack the chair with the leg. Once you pass it here, he's off balance. You see that? Once you get this, you bring it back. See? Mm -hmm. And as you bring it back, this comes. Same time. Mm -hmm. Once that, you go right into this. Or you go right into this. And there's your throw. Nice. Yeah, I like using live blades because it makes you move fast. Yeah, I would hope. <laughs> 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 That was nice. Yeah, Thanks. whatever else you want to. Um, oh, we do got a question here. Mike is asking, ask Tony about meeting Greg for the first time. Oh, yeah. When I met him the first time, that's what you have to We walked that. in and uh, we're talking and we're saying how interested I am in the colleague. And Stanley says, Yeah, we're students of Charles Vigors. Greg said, Okay, yeah. So Greg was kind of sitting like this with his feet on his desk. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he said Charles Vickers, Greg was like, oh, he put his feet down. And then he took his sticks and he put them on the table. And then he just kept talking to us, but he was leaning forward towards the sticks. So I saw it and I was just like, okay. We continued to talk. And then I kind of took the money out and gave him the membership fee, and then we walked out. Yeah. Stanley looks over at me, he goes, so did you see what happened? 
I said, uh, yeah, he put his sticks on the table. Why? He said, because. So back in the day, when you did something, GT <laughs> and Master Joffrey were a little uptight with, mm. they, they would either come after you or send some of the guys after you. So at that time, that's when they had their little. Mm. So I, I'm assuming Greg was probably like, are these guys here to come at me? I uh, gotcha. Okay. They are. They're going to have a rough night today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that was the first time I met him. Right. He's a little unsure, right? Basically, you know, what your guys' intentions were. So yeah. right? he didn't know. Yeah. 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 I, wasn't there, man. I didn't want no trouble, man. Yeah. He would have kicked my butt all over that dojo if I would have tried something. Uh, yeah, he was special. Yeah, I, I'm more ways than one. Um, yeah, whatever else you want to show. I mean, it's up to you. If you guys so, if you guys want to show stuff, if you want to show more stuff, up to you guys. Can we do something? Yeah. Come on, guys. Do a uh, double stick with with Tim. Somebody do a double stick with Tim. E, you want to do double stick with Tim? No. Penel, you want to do it? No. No, like no. Go ahead, Dan. Come on, man. Do double stick with Tim. They're gonna do some double stick. Sure. So you at least see that we only we don't just use single. We don't just yeah, use, yeah. We don't just oh. use C lot. We use everything. He's rusty. He's rusty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having six. This is the way we use this thing. Come on, man. Let's go. Don't worry. I got one more guy for you. Come on. Sure. Yeah. I got this. You need this? Oh, at the end. Hey, uh, Tim. No, matter of fact, Oliver, get up there, man. We got to put Oliver in the mix. Yeah. Come on. Oliver, don't grab me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, don't grab him, man. Don't grab him. Take your glasses off. You don't want to hit man with glasses. <laughs> don't want to hit man with glasses. Got to take his glasses off. Take his glasses off. Please. Where, where'd they go? Oh, he's putting put his shirt on. He's putting his shirt on. He's putting his shirt on. Oh. All right, I'll, I'll do a technique till he comes. Intermission. Come on. So if he throws a number one, right? See here. What you don't see is as I'm moving, the parry is actually a hack to accelerate his number one. So throw it. See? So once once I do that, this is here. So so he goes here, I'm here. Can you see it, Dean? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, so it's here. The next part of that is foot track. So he throws it. I go here. From that point, you see, take a right. Here, I got so many things. 
if you want to go into the creative part, smash his head. So I'm hit. Mm. Okay. All right, Vic, you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, whatever yeah. you want to do. All right, how are you? So how are you doing? It's not about members. I'm like the toad. I use my hands against anyone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You saw you saw the movie Five Deadly Venoms, right? <laughs> I haven't heard that movie in a while. <laughs> so my thing is uh, the concept of something simple, which I was taught. Um, and I have an injury, but you know how the saying goes: he got an injury, I'll probably attack that person first, right? So man gets into a fighting position, right? And he's he's ready. So this is like the, the same concept of just, you know, moving at an angle, but utilizing your hands at the same time, but it gets deeper than that. So whether he's throwing a punch or not, right, I'm going to intercept him. So it's still the knife concept. So if he's standing still, I'm moving straight towards him, but at an angle, and I'm just trapping. All right? I'm not trying to grab his hand. I'm just trying to trap. But that trap here, I come across and hit. Let me just demonstrate it first. I'll break it down. So whether he's gonna throw it or not, right? He's getting ready. Right into the knee. Okay? You alright? <laughs> so what I did was he's standing still, right? As he comes in, I give the appearance of me going in straight, but I come in at an angle. So what makes this technique work, let's say for me, is the energy behind it. So even if he knows what I'm going to do, what? It's, it's the energy that I assault this with. So you know what I'm going to do, right? right. But here it is again. Right. See? It? That movement. So if he moves his head back, right? Move your head back. And I miss that. I still have this part here. Yeah, the sweep. Right. Right? And as he goes down, there's a break here. But that's just the beginning of the fight. Because now the knife comes out. Right? So it's a whole different game. Keep going. <laughs> That's the knife. That's the knife coming out. <laughs> now the money comes out. I'll, I'll do one. All right. It was nice meeting you. I'll do one. Thank yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. Who you want? Who you want out there with you? Um, uh, Big brother, ski. I want to go over You gonna take your uh, your glasses off, or you going where you going? Uh, oh yeah, glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. off. All right, he, he even even off. though they never fall off. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, there was a couple of things. There was a couple of things that uh, I I go over. What happened? I was talking. I was demonstrating something because we did a, a seminar called uh, Keep Sharp not too long ago. So I use uh, my big brother Ski to demonstrate. And, you know, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this on purpose because what happens, let's say the person, let's say he's coming, he's trying to come up with an uppercut, right? Uppercut. He's trying to hit me. Now, what I was actually, then what I actually demonstrate is that people sometimes misconstrue what I'm trying to say. See, because I have a very vast knowledge of my uh, Japanese karate as, as well. Person's coming in with an uppercut. I can stand here and catch it here, but I use my angle and I'm hacking down. As I'm hacking down, I'm moving. When I smack the person's elbow, it's, when you smack the person's elbow, it turns the body around, mm -hmm. right? So what happened, people get that confused because what they think I'm doing is that when the person's come with a punch, they think, come with a punch, they think I'm stepping in Zinku Sadashi and using a block, the damn beret. And they're saying that I can still get cut. I'm not stepping in Zinku Sadashi and I'm doing, I'm not doing a block, the damn beret, because that is not, I guess I am gonna get cut this way. What I'm actually doing is I'm coming down with my hack, and as I'm hacking it, when I smack the elbow, I'm already here. That little motion grabs me because I can step here. If I want to take him here, 
it takes time to go from here to here. There was a situation where I was at a seminar, and this is what happened. Grand Juhan had Grand Juhan had one of the girls come to me and told me when this brother gets up here on the floor with you, he wanted me to counter the guy because what the gentleman was doing was stepping from here and doing this. And he said, don't do that. So when the guy was doing it, when he come from here to here, when I came in this way, I just stepped around his leg and pushed him back. So the thing is, when you're in a situation, I want this fight to end. See, like I said, Grand Juan, and, um, and I had the pleasure of meeting Nene, because like I said, um, Juan, Tony brought him here for me, and we got here, got the kids to train with him. But see, everything I did is was based on me actually, I've actually been fighting with people. And sometimes when I do a lot of seminars with people, I do them and I, I try to push them to, to challenge what I'm doing. Because it gives me a chance to see what I'm doing really want to work. Because Al Den is our teacher. He showed us everything by example. He did everything by example. So one of the moves I like, if the person is coming with an uppercut and I'm hacking down, he feels his pain here. As he's hacking down here, and I'm smacking him this way. I got the choice to come here. I got the choice to come here. I can come back this way. If I want, I can just come here on the person. If I really wanted to, I go past him, drop right down on his body here, and then break his his knee from here, and just drop him right to the floor and come off. Now he hits the ground. He's done. I'm not trying to stand it. If the guy tries to come in and swing and hit me in the face with a wide one, a wide one. See, I can stand here, I can do both hands, but what I'd rather do is I'm a hack him in here. I'm gonna stop him, strike him, carry him, smack the back of his head, bring his head right to my knee, and he's done. The fight is over. That's what I believe. So everything that Tony has told me, everything that Al has told me, everything that um, <coughs> Charles Vickers has taught me, everything I've learned, Skeet has taught me, everything my cousin Ryan has taught me, Everything goes into one head. I don't know where one begins and one ends. It's just a big mix. So if I get out, even with the, even with like a situation where a guy is trying to grab me, there's no grab. Do it again, Ski. Look, there's no grab. I'm gonna move because to me, this is my Blasey Dean. To me, there are no more fists. There are no more kicks. Chance up. These are two knives. And that's how I look at it. I'm like a smile when, when I come here. I just got cut twice. Mm. My thing is, when, when he's coming at me, I'm here. Look what I did. You see? Here. Boom. Look what I'm doing. Boom. Look what I'm doing. You follow me? It's quick. Another thing. Grab my hand. Put a lock on me. I'm not going to let you do a lock on me. <laughs> <laughs> You got my hand. You got my hand. <laughs> I'm here. You're not grab me. <laughs> when I was in kickboxing, when we fought, everybody said, how you block kicks? Well, see, I never block kicks. Brown's kick. We used to try to block it, right? Brown's kick. Everything was here. Brown's kick here. I just stepped off. We don't even block the kicks. When I started learning from Tony and start and Tony started showing a lot more, it, now it's even worse. What Ski was showing me is Brown Kate, I'm here. Breaking you. I'm breaking you. Mm. Break right here. I will catch you with my elbow and come down here. He's done. Break everything. Everything's broke. I mean, big brother Al, the most incredible thing I ever heard. He's in that prison. How much strength you have to use to take a hand and crack somebody like this? and break the bones. I would not want to meet a guy like that in the street. Because this, this forearm is nowhere near <laughs> as thick as that parking meter. <laughs> and I'm telling you something. No, I'm telling you something. I mean, he's not here. Big Al hasn't been here. I, I still love him to this day. Uh, Charles was telling me how he, he had to smack through on somebody's, was his windshield to get the guy, smack him in the face. Could you imagine? He take his, he's so tempered, he smacked through the guy's windshield and smacked the guy in the face. So, so a windshield. So wait a minute. He had, they went at a stoplight. 
The guy okay. kind of showed him off. Mm. Road rage. Oh, Road gotcha. Rage. He walked up. He said, what'd you say? The guy rolled the window up. He looked around and did a palm strike through the glass and knocked the guy out. The guy was on the horn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic light. He went in his car and took off. That's how hard this guy is. That's, that's why my footwork is excellent. Because, yeah. because remember, yeah, you didn't want to get hit by that palm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So the basic movement, the basic stuff I used was based on everything that these brothers taught me. And it wasn't like I'm a neophyte who never done martial arts before. You know, I'm a person, Vic can tell you, I'm a person, my cousin tell you, I'm a person who was actually fought in the street with people that was picking up bottles, cans, or whatever they had to do. When I first went to my school, Maplewood, every single so-called black belt would come, come to my school and try to challenge me because they said, there's no way I know what I know. And I fought people all the time. So when I, when I came to this, the only reason why I started learning this is because Al beat me down so bad, I mean, I couldn't even get a punch on him. Beat me down so bad, he just showed me, um, wow, what I thought I knew, I didn't know anything. And that's that's the way it was. So those techniques I do, this is these are ones, these are the techniques I live by. A lot of them. And as far as what I'm learning, when Tony started uh teaching me the sword and the other stuff I needed, uh people who had knew me who had trained with Al, they, they said I used to kind of blast through people. Mm. You know, they said Duran used to blast through people the way Al did. But then what started happening. When I got when I got Tony size, <laughs> all of a sudden now I can step here. On. I can move. I have understanding. I have my understanding from here. Now I cannot do anything on you. Because I will just let's say you cut, let's say you cut this right every night. You go to stab me and I, I gotta stick this up. Now I can stop you here. I'll stop you right here for, real quick. <laughs> well he's not as far away. Look, I'm here. He's done. That's it. Even from the inside, he's coming. If I'm stepping, look. Look at this. You see that? Based on the same motion. Mm. Because I take this. I did demonstration one time in Atlantic City. Brother Tony gave me an idea. I started doing this with an umbrella. Remember? I started doing an umbrella. Basically, same thing. And that's what it is. Now, I still have a lot to learn. People start calling me masters. Let me tell you something. I'm a beginner. Just because. You can't hurt me. You know, you call me a master, right? I'm a kid. So that's what I want to tell you guys. I'm done. Awesome. So, uh, <clears throat> Duran, just so nobody's confused, um, yeah. do you let anybody grab you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> can, can anybody grab me? <laughs> you said, just joking. No, anybody, no one's going to grab me at all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Tony got it. I'm still, I'm still kicking. <laughs> I just wanted to say one thing. So if you want to get uh, proficient in anything, you want to uh, become excellent, you have to train. Uh, we're consistently training every week. And uh, we have members here. I just want to acknowledge them all. Everyone come up real quick. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you guys, I tell you, it definitely does not seem fun to train there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Come on, Sonny Boy. Oh, we get it all up here. Here, I'll lower my phone. And we still got more members that didn't come today. You know? Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people not here. So these are just some of the members that are here. This is some of us. Yeah, we have anywhere between uh, maybe 20 and 45 members. Yeah, they all that's awesome. Up. Awesome. Yeah, at night, but we're growing, and uh, we're a family organization. Yes, yes. And uh, I believe that you know everyone should cross train, and uh, if anybody wants to come train with us, contact Tuhan, and uh, we'd be more than welcome to you know accommodate that. So I just wanted to acknowledge everyone that's here because we're a group. And we're a family. Yeah, so. And Tony is our senior. He is our senior. Yeah. This has got to be one of the funnest interviews I've ever done. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we play. We, we play. 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 We
<laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun for all of us. I tell you what, though. Yeah. FMA, dis FMA discussion will never be the same. <laughs> <laughs> Some techniques. Let's go. Hey, but uh, hey, I salute yeah. you all. That was uh outstanding, um, really, and I'm, I'm so glad we made this happen. And um, hopefully, yeah. I hope this is not the last time you guys would consider coming on. There's gonna be some stuff going on, FMA discussion, kind of going on the road per se. And what I'm gonna be looking at is geographically certain areas where, in that particular area, let's just say, for instance, New Jersey, where I would like get people in that area, and obviously, I would love. For you to be part of that when that materializes, you know. Anytime, man. Anytime. You know, Thank you. It'd be a me. pleasure to, because uh, I, you know, I, and I need to have some of that fun, man. That's why. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. We we do. We're like a big family. You see this? Yeah. Day we all came down. Listen, listen this. One day we all came. We all came down. Like everybody yeah. came to my house. So they all we got in the basketball court, and I was over. There. I was in my backyard cooking. You know, barbecue. And these young boys challenged all of us to a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> these young boys, and they beat them all. They destroyed them. <laughs> oh my gosh! You have fun, man. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, I, I believe we it. Were down yeah. for a couple of days after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys were. Uh, yeah, we exactly. had to, we had to get the liniment, and you know. Yeah. <laughs> Icy hot, the whole nine yards, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> But all, this is awesome. I'll be in touch with the, um, Duran, of course, and all that. But again, okay. I want to thank you guys for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah. No, thank you for having us. Bro. Thanks a lot. We thank appreciate you. it. Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. But hey, you all take care. And again, um, yeah, just Thanks, let's Steve. stay in touch. Because like, again, when I when I think it starts to materialize, um, you know, I, I would like I would love for you guys to be part of it, you know? Yes, yes. Thank you. We would love to be a part of it too. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for exposing us to a uh, a lot of people who don't know we really exist. Yeah, like, like, I know. Oh, that's that's, that's um, the whole thing about this show. You know, we you know we don't just interview people, the big names. I mean, you know, we want you know anybody who's got something to say or deserves maybe never had the chance or opportunity to be heard. You know, that's what we do. If you look at the guest list that we've had on, they're not all huge names. You know, we give everybody an opportunity to be heard, and you know. Let me know if you need any more information on the Grandmasters. I, I still got more detailed files right, right here. All right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. No, but okay. Perfect. Again, you guys, thank you so much. It was, this was definitely a fun episode. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, man. Thanks. <laughs> All right, you guys. You guys take care. All right, take man. care. Have, have a good night. Good night. Yeah. Everybody have a good night out there. You too. Hey, hey, you guys have a great holiday if I don't talk to you. Yeah, you too. Same to you. Same to you. All right. Y'all boys ready? Bye. 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 Wow, that was, that could be in the finest episode. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> Who is next? I think Friday night I'm going to be getting uh, Guru J, that, the Cyan Screamer, or my, actually Monday. We're supposed to be getting some weather Friday. So, yeah. I'll know tomorrow, but Friday or Monday. That's going to be the next episode, uh, Guru J for Cyan. And scream up. Uh, he was on before, really demos and you know, really pretty fun. But in any event, Tom Payne made this. So yeah, have a smashing Christmas, everyone. For the FMA discussion team. Yeah. So I hope everybody that's watching, I hope you guys definitely have a great holiday. Uh, more than likely, yeah, the next episode will be Monday. Uh, more I'm thinking. Uh, but look for the quick bits. Definitely gonna be pounding those out. And I and folks, again. Definitely submit some. All it is, a couple minutes. You send me on Google Drive, a couple minute video of what you're doing. Send me a profile pic in with the video. And there you go. It's a good way for people to see what you're doing. Okay. I mean, a couple minute video. I have about, I can tell you right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven left, meaning I probably on average post two to three a week. So if you guys can keep them coming in, that'd be great. Again, people get to see what you're doing. You know, like free advertising. You just send me a video. So, all right. Again, have a great holiday. Happy New Year. And we'll see you guys hopefully uh, Monday, next episode. All right.